Hey guys, Eric with The Hunt and Fool bringing another Mastering the Draw video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Montana non-resident opportunities. Uh, quick overview, we're going to talk about the draw allocation, uh, general combination licenses, limited entry permits, over-the-counter opportunities, the alternate list, and public and private land in Montana. All right, so the draw allocation for elk, deer, antelope, and bison. The way they do it is non-residents are limited to, but not guaranteed, 10% of the permit quota for each hunt. Uh, this means that you need a minimum of 10 permits on a hunt to be available for non-residents. The draw allocation for sheep, moose, and goat is a little bit different. Non-residents are restricted to certain hunts within certain districts. Um, they're limited to, but not guaranteed, 10% of a region's quota. If only one permit is available for a hunt, it can be drawn by a non-resident if the regional non-resident quota has not yet been filled. General combination licenses. So there's three types of these. You've got the big game combination license, which includes both a general elk and general deer tag. You've got the elk combination license, which is obviously just a general elk tag. And you've got the deer combination license, just a general deer tag. Limited entry permits. So limited entry hunts are available for sheep, moose, goat, bison, elk, deer, antelope, and mountain lion. You must draw a general combination tag to be eligible for the limited entry elk and or deer draw. Over the counter opportunities, uh, are available for antlerless elk, antlerless deer, wolf, black bear, and mountain lion as well. All right, the alternate list. So Montana has a policy that allows a non-resident to return a general combination license uh, for whatever reason. Return general combination licenses will be reissued through the alternate list. So those who sign up for the alternate list will be assigned a random position on that list and beginning in mid-July, those with the uppermost position on the list will be contacted by email to finalize the purchase of a combination license. Uh, sign up for that, for that alternate list is going to be typically uh, May 15th through June 30th. Public and private land in Montana, there's plenty of both, big state. Uh, but as far as public land goes, over 30 million acres, or roughly a third of the state, is public land. Most of the western half is where you're going to find most of the public ground, and then most of the eastern half is where you're going to find most of the private ground. They have a program called Block Management Cooperative, and the Block Management Co-op is a cooperative program between private landowners and Fish, Wildlife, and Parks to provide the public with free access to private land. There are 7 million acres of private land enrolled in the program and there's an access guide that's typically released in the middle of August or so um, that covers available block management lands for the upcoming season. So if you're going DIY in Montana, make sure and check that list out. That'll be very helpful if you're trying to get on a piece of block management. And that's it for a quick overview on Montana. Thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions, you can always give us a shout here at the office. And uh, if you liked the video, give us a like. Thanks for watching.